So in the last video, I quickly populated the main sock and a pair of DDRs on this board. And I'm going to pick up in this video and start filling in the power rails. And so across this board, I have a series of power rails. And if I zoom into that just for a, a minute here real quick, uh, you're going to see that I've got a 3.3 volt, a 1.0, 1.8, 1.35, and a 0 0.675. And with those, I have LED indicators, and I'd like to see if I can just get that much up and running. I think I'll bring power in through uh, just a DC uh, barrel connector here uh, for my power source. I'll be able to indicate I got my 5 volt that made it through the fuse, and a, uh, sh uh, I've got a shot key uh, rectifier uh, there too, uh, just to make sure that uh, is lighting up okay. And then I'll start populating you know, each of these, maybe starting out with a 3, 3 volt. Uh, see if I can get that uh, basically up and running and also indicating that it is working with an LED status uh, indicator. And then if that works, then I'll, I'll, I'll work my way through the rest of these. Now looking at my schematic here, you can see on my uh, power sheet, I'm showing my DC barrel coming in, going through that shot key rectifier through a fuse. That'll give me this uh, 5 volt you know, external power uh, that's coming in. And that 5 volt external power uh, comes into a pair of jumpers, and then I can uh, run that to my, my 5 volt. That's the main 5 volt for the board. The alternative is to move these jumpers instead of on 1 and 2 to 2 and 3, and that'll pull power from a USB connector. Uh, so I'm not going to do any of that right now. I'm just going to have to put in these jumpers, so header 2 and header 3 uh, on this. So when I come down here, uh, I'll have to find that uh, header 2 and header 3 um, coming in from my DC. Here's my header 2 and header 3, and then I'll set those jumpers accordingly. So I'll bring power in through the DC barrel, uh, get my main 5 volt supplied, and then if I jump over to this regulators sheet, uh, I can see I've got a whole series of regulators. And actually the way that uh, these are being powered up I'm going to have to start with a 1.0 volt uh, because its power good uh, is what should enable the 1.8 to turn on. Its power good will get me my 135 and then the same thing on to my 33. And then for all of those, I do have uh, indicators. So I should be able to uh, light up an LED with my 5 volt, uh, with my 1.033, 0 0.65, 1.0. 3.5 and my 1.8 once I get all of that done. And then this one down here is for my DDR3 bus termination. Uh, my 1.35 uh, sitting uh, down here along with this uh, 0.675. So I'll, I'll, I'll get those uh, eventually going here too. But I think that's what I'm going to work on right now. Now, if I step back just for a second to this, maybe what I plan to use throughout this, uh, I have this little guy, and uh, this is just a little, basically a hot plate, just a little miniature hot plate. Uh, I'll likely use that underneath uh, like this so that I can heat this up and uh, get this main uh, power regulator, These well, the power regulator for each rail put in. Um, that along with a, a hot gun, hot air station here, should I get the job done. Uh, you'll also notice that on my bench, I do have my normal microscope here, an Amscope, plus I pulled up my digital microscope so that I can flip over and take a look at any of this uh, throughout and try to record that uh, as I'm going. Uh, so here you can see, here's an example where I will get this regular regulator on this TPS 56628. Uh, you know, it does have this pad underneath. So I think what I will probably do there is uh, just use a little bit of solder paste uh, to drop on there. Uh, and then um, I could probably actually put solder paste on all of this too. And then between the little hot plate and, and or my hot air gun, uh, just get that soldered on. Uh, right there and then an inductor and you know all the other little miscellaneous components that go with that uh, resistors etc and then eventually get out and show my 3 3 volt indicator uh, but looking at that schematic i need to start with a 1.0 so that's this uh, right here so i'll get that 1.0 uh, filled in 
Uh, and that's what I'm going to do first is just get the 1.0 running and lit up and see if uh, that's all working so far. And then again, I'll start filling out the rest of these. Um, but that's my plan. Start getting power put in here. And uh, got the stack of components here that should get me through, I think, all of my power work. So I've got the main... Um, this is my main, uh, this TPS 56628. Uh, so that's my schematic, in my schematic, I've got quite a few of those um, fuses, uh, all of these other miscellaneous parts just in the basic power rails. Uh, so I'm not going to necessarily record this, it's just going to be a bunch of uh, soldering. So uh, I'm going to take a break right here and come back. Uh, maybe once I get the 1.0 rail running and see if that works uh, at this point or not. Okay, so real quick, I have the first little piece done here. And if I go in and take a look at this, I have my barrel connector in. And then from there, I'm going through the little shot key, going through a fuse, going through these uh, pin headers just to connect power to the main 5 volt. And then I have a resistor and an LED. I also put a uh, just a bulk capacitor on here coming on the, uh, the incoming 5 volt. And uh, for power, what I'm going to be doing, I guess, as I go through this, I've been using this little, uh, well, I guess, um, breakout box. This goes down to my benchtop power supply. You can see I'm feeding it about uh, 5 point, uh, 5.1 volts to get to this, just knowing that I'm going to lose some through this little cable. And I, I use this little box because I use these other types of connectors that you've probably seen in some of my other videos. Uh, that look like this and that's a pretty common uh, power connector i'll use on most of my my circuits however uh, this one uh, i just was trying to conserve space and uh, i'm hoping that at some point it's all run off of usb anyways and i shouldn't need the dc power barrel uh, too much but um, i do have this uh, box also gives me banana outs and then from there I'm going to a barrel so this is just an easy way for me to to give this uh, five volts right here um, and then I can just flip the switch and then this will show me uh, what is it outputting uh, for amps which right now this LED isn't even enough to to light this up for uh, current uh, but later when I start drawing more current this will get a little bit more helpful but you can see here, I have this blue LED that's lit up so I can turn off power. I can turn on power and uh, that means my main five volt. So I've got a five volt external, uh, again, going through those components that gets me into my main five volt uh, for the board. And then I'm just lighting up a blue LED. Uh, so next I need to go to my one volt up here and get that up and running. Okay, so I have now populated the 1.0 volt components for that rail. And I do have an indicator over here if I'm getting uh, really that voltage out. And uh, if I turn on power coming in, this 5 volt, you can see I've got this uh, blue LED for 5 volt. I've got a red LED showing me that I have my uh, 1 volt. And I am checking this, and if I just connect to one of these corner grounds, and uh, coming out of this inductor at the top, I should be able to see my 1.1 uh, volt, or 1 volt, sorry. And so if I test that, uh, no, I'm not recording my... Uh, oscilloscope output, but I'm seeing 1.067 volts uh, at that point. So I think I'm looking pretty good there. And I suppose I could also take my digital multimeter uh, DC volts, and I'm just going to do the same type of measurement. So uh, if I grab this here, I am reading 1.0087. Yeah, fluctuating between 8687. So 1.0087 volts DC. So I think uh, this appears to be working fine. 
and uh, I'll go ahead and flip power off for a second. I'll throw this under the, the microscope just so you can see what I've got done so far. So up in this power rail, this is what it looks like. Uh, again, I'm soldering this by hand. Um, I've not cleaned it up. The flux is still sitting on there. Uh, but uh, for, let me grab something to point here. Um, but I ended up putting a little bit of uh, basically solder paste underneath this. And uh, then I uh, soldered these on and then use, a, use that little mini hot plate underneath with a little bit of hot air on top to kind of let it all settle down. So I think that soldered um, just fine. Uh, I've got all my uh, capacitors and resistors. Uh, so filtering capacitors, resistors that help set this regulator to the right voltage. Uh, and then here's my little LED indicator and its resistor. Um, and then that inductor. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, oh, it takes a lot of heat to solder these on because there's so much uh, basically copper here. But uh, you can see it. these, these uh, capacitors are connected underneath, but I also just simply bridged across that because it was a uh, a little tricky to solder but anyways this all um, you know went on fine uh, there was nothing here that was uh, outstandingly difficult to get soldered on by hand so I think I just need to repeat that process and jumping back out over here to this view here um, so I've got the uh, 1.0 done and then if I look at my schematic the next thing to do on my schematic after the 1.0 is its power good should feed into uh, this down here, which is my 1.8. So I should be getting out of pin 4, this power good signal. Uh, so uh, it'd be pin 4. And I could uh, probably double check that, but when I get down to this R5, I'm just going to go and look and see where that's at. And so that'll be down here in my 1.8. And I'm going to zoom into that. So let's see. So get me into my 1.8. And I should see coming in right here. I don't have this resistor populated yet, but that's where that power good's going to come in. And that should be going to pin one. Yeah, that's my enable. So if I was to just test this by putting power on it and turning it on. I should be able to tap a ground and then come into this incoming R5. And I have a 4.84 volts there. So I think that enable is working fine. I still, of course, have to put a 10K resistor in line, which would get it down to here and then get it into this next regulator. But I think uh, 4.8376, uh, I, I know the voltage is just slowly dropping, but 4.836 is, is where it's at. So I think that all seems reasonable. Uh, so that gives me a, a little bit of confidence that that maybe that power setup um, seems to be working for the 1.0. So I got my 5 volt 1.0 and now I just need to continue that process uh, with these other rails. And uh, this is where I'm going to probably stop for now. I think uh, when I come back to the next video, I might just simply pick up with the rest of these rails. Uh, these rail components populated that's just going to take a bit of time to hand solder all that and that's where i'll pick up at the next video is uh, where those rails are populated unless i run into some problem prior to that if one of these rails isn't firing up or isn't 
uh, outputting the voltage I would expect, uh, then I might come back to a video sooner. Otherwise, I'll get those up and running and then come back and figure out uh, what are the next things I want to populate on this. Thank you.